This is the S58 and Grand Wagoneer's worst nightmare. This is the VR35 DDTT. It's coming out in 2025. It's going to be in the QX80. It is unveiled to have 450 horsepower and 515 foot pound of torque. This car was unveiled to be coming with a 9 speed automatic torque converter conventional transmission, but we're going to focus more on the engine aspects that this car is coming with. Now, we're going to do a mechanical breakdown based on the current platform, which is the VR30, which is in the Nissan Z, Q15, Q60. Now, comparing the old variant of the engine into the modern new variant that's coming out in 2025, the very top of the engine, you're going to notice that there's only one single throttle body. I'm guessing that throttle body is going to be around three inches to three and a half inches when it releases. My question is, after 20 years later, they decided to go back to one single throttle body on their V6 engine. That is my biggest question. Another question is, where are they going to route the intercoolers? Because as, as you can see, there's two turbos at the very side that it looks like there's integrated manifold as well on this platform as well. I don't know. To me, the turbos kind of look very small. I hope I really, really hope they don't do that again. Like, come on now, you have a bigger motor that you added a bigger displacement, you have to at least up the turbo size. Don't cheap out again, Nissan. I love how in these photos, they gatekeep a lot of information from the press, because if you look closer towards the turbos, a lot of these things that a mechanically inclined person is gonna be looking at, they're gonna question and kind of criticize. Like, I'm really just looking at how the turbines are really kind of small, like in comparison to the pulley sizes in the front of the motor, the turbos kind of look almost the same size. Keep in mind that this engine is going into a big boy truck that used to be in V8 and now it is a twin turbo V6. If anybody's wondering if it's going to sound like a GTR or a G35, I guarantee you it will not because as you can see, again, what they did with this VR motor is that they integrated the exhaust manifold into the motor. So what that means, there is just gas flowing from a flange straight to the turbo no manifold nothing because it's inside of the engine i found this image off of a car reviewer it's really hard to find any details because these car reviewers show very vague information on the engine bay that's how you know it is a, a very horrific engine bay to work on if car reviewers are scared to talk about it um and in the engineering aspects if you could look at the front throttle body what connects to it has to be some sort of intercooler interchiller something because the turbo cannot just be straight towards the throttle body or it will blow hot air into it with that being noted the intercooler is most likely at the very front of this engine so the turbo will go up and around to the very start and there's some sort of intercooler cooler system and then that connects to the very throttle body there that's my guess speculation until the car comes out how much you want to guarantee these guys are going to use some plastic oil pans again? Infinity, the manufacturer that decides to put a car all the way at a 100 story skyscraper for no reason and still decides to sell all the customers a plastic oil pan. I'm not going to lie, the QX80 is a beautiful car that is mainly going to be targeted to a certain group of people that have a certain tax bracket. <clears throat> A lot of people are going to be leasing this car. This is not going to be like a forever car for a lot of people. So they mainly won't even look inside, inside of the engine bay. It's just going to go straight to the dealership whenever it has an issue. I personally would not keep this car as a permanent car, but I hope to see down the line the tuning capabilities from EcuTech and the, the modern day VR30 tuners, such as Sonic Tuned and Racebox. I would love to see the potential, potential that they could possibly do to this engine right here. Long-term owners are most likely going to see a big development of sludge because, as you know, this is another direct injection vehicle. And I guarantee you, most of the owners don't even know what an oil catch can is, so they're never going to end up getting that. And there's just going to be sludge caking and caking and caking, and then the engine eventually goes boom. This engine should have came out in the new Nissan Z and been released in the 2024 Infiniti Q50. They've really been slacking, I'm not going to lie. Now, the question about swapping this into another Q50, Q60, Nissan Z, or any other FM platform car, that is another big headache. Because as you know, this engine has a bunch of computer systems that only work specifically with the QX80. You need wiring harness, you need someone to program uh, the ECU that connects to the CAN bus signal. There's so many different things that is needed to do to do a proper engine swap with this motor. It's not even worth it at the end of the day. 
I would love for this to be an easy engine swap, but I guarantee you it is not. When this engine even gets released, it's possibly going to cost like fifteen to twenty thousand dollars at the junkyard used in the next couple of years. At this point, if you really want to swap this motor in, just get a GTR. Just get a GTR, man.